Hi everyone! In today's video I will show you a practical example of closed loop voltage mode control for a synchronous buck converter using a type 3 compensator. I will demonstrate both the average control model and the full switching model in LT Spice, so you can see how the loop behaves in AC analysis and how it performs in a realistic PVM switching simulation. This compensator is designed for a 10 kHz crossover frequency and around 68 degrees phase margin. And we will verify how those design targets translate into the simulation results. First, I will show you the averaged closed loop model of the synchronous bug converter, and then we will switch to the full switching model so you can see how close the behavior matches. Let's start with the simulation setup. Before we look at the control loop, here is a quick overview of the buck converter model we are using. Although the real circuit uses a high side and low side MOSFET, in this simulation they are replaced with an averaged model shown here. The switching action of the MOSFETs is mathematically averaged into a continuous duty cycle input, so this model describes only the low frequency dynamics of the converter. This simplifies the simulation and gives us a clean access to the control loop behavior without any switching ripple. Aside to the averaged model, the power stage is represented also by inductor, equivalent series resistor of the inductor, the MOSFETs uh, on resistance, the output uh, capacitor and equivalent uh, series resistor of the capacitor, and the load resistor. In this example, the converter steps down uh, 9 volts on the input to the 2 volts on the output, and the design is based on a switching frequency of 200 kHz. The average model is ideal for AC analysis and fast transient simulations. Now let's look at the control part of the circuit. Here we have voltage uh, feedback network. The resistor R4 forms the lower part of the divider and R1 is the upper resistor. Even though R1 appears in the feedback path, it actually also belongs to the type 3 compensator structure shown here because it forms the integrator pole together with the capacitor C1. The lower resistor R4 is not part of the compensator, it only sets the output uh, voltage scaling. And uh, yeah, as I said, this is the full uh, type 3 compensator. This network provides uh, two zeros uh, for phase boost, two high frequency poles to control the high frequency roll off, and the integrator pole at the origin for zero steady state error. This compensator is designed for a 10 kHz crossover and about 68 degrees phase margin. Now let's run a transient simulation. Uh, here we have the load step, which I set to be equal to 1 amp, and we can observe how the converter reacts uh, to those load steps. We will observe the output uh, voltage of our converter, uh, and we will observe also the load step uh, current. Uh, the duration of simulation is set to be 10 millisecond. And as you can see already, uh, we have the startup uh, procedure here, uh, where we ramp up uh, the voltage uh, gradually, and it's called the soft uh, startup. And here you can already observe our load uh, steps. So now simulation is uh, finished. And we can observe here, as you can see, some small uh, voltage uh, dips followed by a fast and stable uh, recovery here and as well here. Uh, there is a small overshoot, but this is uh, acceptable here. And uh, there is no ringing, there is no oscillation, and which confirms that the compensator is tuned correctly and the loop has the required stability margin. If we want also to uh, remove this small overshoot, then we can uh, additionally adjust our compensator if needed. Let's now see the AC analysis. But uh, first we need to enable uh, AC simulation and disable the transient uh, simulation. So here we disable the transient simulation and 
here we enable the uh, AC simulation. Here we also uh, can enable the measurement for our uh, crossover frequency and also for the phase uh, margin. In addition, we also need to remove the ramp from our uh, reference, otherwise we can see uh, incorrect uh, results. So we need here the pure uh, DC value. And now we can run our uh, AC uh, simulation. And in order to see the uh, loop gain body diagram, we need first, for example, to click here uh, to measure this voltage. And then here we need to measure the voltage V over epsilon divided by V over X. And then we can uh, see our loop gain. Based on the diagram, we can observe that uh, crossover frequency where we are crossing the 0 dB, it's approximately 10 kilohertz. And here phase margin is uh, more than we expected. It's approximately maybe around uh, 80 degrees. And this is uh, because values of the components inside type 3 compensator structure are not the exact uh, like calculated due to the rounding and uh, what is more realistic to have in uh, practice. If you want to see exact the crossover frequency and the phase margin for our simulation, you can open the log file, uh, which can be found in the same uh, folder like a simulation. And here you can observe uh, what is our phase margin and uh, crossover frequency. So crossover frequency is uh, around 9.7 kilohertz and phase margin is around uh, 83 uh, degrees. Now let's move to the full switching model. This uh, schematic represents the real implementation of the converter, including the MOSFETs, gate drivers, the PVM modulator and that time generator. The control loop uh, and compensator values are exactly the same as in the average model. The only difference is that now we include the real switching uh, behavior. Here we have the pulse width uh, modulator. It converts the compensator output voltage into a switching duty cycle by comparing it against a sawtooth or ramp waveform. This represents how real digital or analog controllers generate switching commands for the MOSFETs. Because this is a synchronous buck converter, we need complementary gate signals for the high side and low side MOSFETs. This uh, block here adds uh, that time between switching transitions to prevent both uh, MOSFETs uh, from turning on at the same time, which would cause shoot through. That time introduces a small delay into the system and slightly affects the control loop, which is why uh, switching simulations are important. The gate driver model adds uh, realistic behavior such as uh, propagation delay and finite rise and fall times. These effects don't appear in the average model, but uh, they matter in hardware and have a small influence on the transient response. And here is also the power stage uh, with the real uh, MOSFETs. Now we have no longer averaging uh, the switching cycles. The inductor current ramps up and down every switching period. The MOSFETs uh, switch on and off and the body diode conducts during that time. Uh, this gives us a realistic modeled converter with uh, all switching ripple included. Let's now run the transient simulation. As was the case uh, for previous uh, simulation, we will also here observe the output voltage uh, of our converter and we will observe how it uh, reacts to the load steps. Uh, on the output here, we have also the load step from 0 to 1 amp and we will also observe uh, this. Uh, as you can see already, we also have the ramp where we uh, have the soft startup procedure for our converter. And after the 2-3 milliseconds, we have the stable voltage, which is uh, around uh, 2 volts. And here is the first uh, load step where our load steps uh, from uh, 0 to 1 amp or steps additionally for, uh, from 0 to 1 amp because here we already have the small load. 
and you can observe that uh, voltage uh, dips a little bit and after a while it uh, returns back here is uh, another load step uh, but now it's uh, from 1 amp uh, to 0 amp and here we have also the stable uh, voltage as was the case before and now we need to wait uh, till the 10 milliseconds. Here is another another load step. And now simulation is uh, finished. You will notice the results look uh, similar to the averaged uh, model, but uh, with a few differences. Uh, we now have the switching ripple, which, which can be observed on the green signal. The response has uh, small cycle-to-cycle -cycle variations, and there is a slightly different dip uh, and recovery uh, shape. Uh, these differences uh, come from the PVM uh, sampling, dead time effects, uh, gate driver delays, MOSFET uh, conduction losses and the inductor current ripple. The important part is that the overall dynamic shape is the same. Uh, the type 3 compensator stabilizes the converter and ensures a fast and well damped response, just like in the averaged model. You will notice that the transient response is uh, not uh, symmetrical. The dip during a load increase looks uh, different uh, from the overshoot during a load uh, decrease. This is completely normal for a buck converter because the power stage responds differently when the inductor current needs to increase versus when it needs to decrease. Uh, why the dip is larger uh, when we step uh, load up? Uh, when the load uh, current steps up, the inductor needs to increase its current, but the inductor current can only rise at a fixed rate. This means the converter cannot instantly deliver the extra current. As a result, the output capacitor temporarily supports the load, causing a voltage dip until the inductor current catches up. This is the main reason the dip looks uh, the way it does. You may also notice that the depth of the dip is about 100 millivolts different between the average model and the switching model. That's expected. The switching model includes ripple, dead time, MOSFET losses and sampling delay. All of these slightly reduce the effective control bandwidth, so the switching model reacts a bit slower than the ideal average model. So at this point we have verified the design in two ways. The average model gives clean uh, loop gain and transient information, and the switching model confirms realistic behavior with PVM, dead time and MOSFET switching included. This gives us confidence that the compensator is uh, correctly tuned and ready for hardware implementation. This is uh, the typical workflow when designing voltage mode control for buck converters. First we design, we simulate the AC, then we simulate the transient response and then we verify in hardware. You can download the exact LTSPICE models and all supporting files, including the averaged model, switching model and the Octave scripts completely free from HK Academy. The link is in the description below. And if you want uh, the deeper explanation of the Type 3 compensator, including theory, detailed simulations, test in discretization, and the full C2000 implementation, the Type 3 compensator course is coming in the next uh, weeks. You can already check out the course page and subscribe to stay updated. Thanks for watching and next week I will post the practical hardware measurement and compare it directly with the simulation. See you in the next video.